بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم والعن أعداءهم In the name of God, the compassion, the merciful, hello dear brothers and sisters, respected viewers, welcome to Karbala. Welcome to land of Hussein, welcome to land of Abbas. Once again, welcome to this live show which is called The Shining Moons. In this land, next to the whole shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and Imam Abbas alayhi salam and in this great moon, Moon of Ramadan, Shahru Ramadan, Alladhi Unzila Fihi Al Quran, in this great month that the Holy Quran was descended from the sky, from the heaven to the earth. We will represent you next to the Holy Shana of Hussein alayhi salam and Abu Fal Abbas alayhi salam and we'll perform ziyara on your behalf. Once again, here in this great land, we're ready to spend our time understanding learning and talking about the greatness of Ahlul Bayt, about going through the very great phrases of Ziyarat al jamaa ah. Before we start talking about the Ziyarat jamaa ah, and we have the respected guest Sheikh Mustafa Akhun inshallah with me in the studio. Let's say humble salam to Imam Hussain alayhi salam and Abdul Abbas alayhi salam and be za'ar of these two great individuals. And after that, insha'Allah, we will go ahead with the Ziyarat at Jamaa. So join me for a humble salam to Imam Hussain alayhi salam and Abu Fal Abbas alayhi salam. Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah. Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah. Assalamu alayka ya Ibn Rasulullah. السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين وابن سيد الوصيين السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين السلام عليك وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتك السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين. Let's all together say humble salam to Abu Fadl Abbas عليه السلام, the loyal brother of Abu Abdullah al Hussein عليه السلام. السلام عليك يا باب الحوائج. السلام عليك يا قمر بني هاشم. السلام عليك يا ساقي العطاشا. Assalamu alayka ya kafila Zainab. O oh, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, you are Bab al-Hawa'ij. People, those who would like their hajat to be fulfilled, they come to your house, they come to your shrine and ask you for their needs, for their requests. Please ask Almighty to hasten the reappearance of Imam of our time, in this year. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
To be honest, we really need to be thankful to Almighty for granting us this great opportunity of being able to be next to Holy Shana from Hussein Ali Salam and Rafal Abbas Alayhi Salam first, and secondly, for being able to discuss and talk about their greatness. This is a great na'mah, this is a great, great, great blessing that Almighty has granted us. And indeed, we need to thank Almighty for this great blessing. And indeed, in the Day of Judgment, we will be asked about this blessing. In Holy Quran also says, Let us In the Day of Judgment, in which you are going to be asked about the blessing that Almighty has granted you. And actually, this blessing is not the water, the food, the air that we breathe, and all the other things that we can um, just be said as physical things, materialistic things. The greatest blessing that Almighty grants people, all the universe, everyone on this earth, has been granted by this blessing, but some people accept it and some people don't, is the wilaya of the commander of faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam because he is the only successor after the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, whose right was usurped by those usurpers, those hypocrites who burnt the house of Fatima al-Zahra alayha, and changed the path of Islam and led people to go astray after the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, by all those bid'ah that they made in Islam. Inshallah, in this night, just like the other nights, we're going to go through the rest of the phrases of the Ziyarat Jama'i and learn more about Ahl al-Bayt, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim ajma'een. But before we start discussing this great phrases, let me remember you that inshallah within these one or two days or nights we are going to receive the phone numbers of those who would like to participate the uh, competition if we can say so of the month of Ramadan. The competition in which you are going to be asked questions about all the lectures that we had these nights. So those who give full answers to the questions, one out of them will be rewarded by a very great reward. So let's start this show, inshallah, and start knowing more about Ahlul Bayt, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi ajma'in. I would like to welcome Sheikh Mustafa Afund for being here in this studio once again. Sheikh Neh, Assalamu Alaikum, and thank you for being with us here in this studio and giving us these great lectures these nights. Wa Alaikum Assalam wa Rahmatullah to you, Brother Mustafa, and all the viewers of Imam Hussein TV3. Asking first and foremost Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Mahdi, Ajalallah Ta'ala, Farajuhu Sharif and grant the visitation of all the viewers of this show either live tonight or later on visitation of the shrines of Ahl al-Bayt in the Island. Holy Land of Karbala, the Holy Land of Najaf, Kalamein, Samarra, all the shrines of Ahl al-Bayt inshallah as soon as possible. How much inshallah. Thank you so much, thank you so much Shaykhna. Yesterday night as I remember we talked about the Ahl al-Bayt salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim ajma'in as proofs of Allah for the people of earth, for the people in hereafter, for hereafter, and for Al-Ula, those who hadn't, uh, those who um, were created before the creation of human being on earth, if we can say so. Uh, is this a phrase which says, Wa has it anything else to discuss about, or no, we are going to go to another? I have a couple of points uh, to conclude right. regarding this phrase and the proofs of Allah against the inhabitant of the world, the hereafter and the former world. We have to keep in mind, I read a hadith last night, I like to remind ourselves, yeah. we have to keep always reminding ourselves. For example, one of my relative uh, when he wants to do something, he would typically wear our rings in, 
next to the pinky. So what he, do he does, he takes it and he puts his ring in his index. Yeah. So he remembers it, that I have to do something. Uh, or I have some another relative that he takes a pen and he writes it here. Mm -hmm. He reminds himself. Right now with this technology, with all the applications that are there, we have always notifications, a reminder for ourselves. So we have to use this, this technology, we have to use whatever at our disposal to remind ourselves about uh, day of Akhirah, about this phrase that this hadith that I read from uh, Amali the Shaykh al-Mufid, page 228, where Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq narrates, uh, Allah has the ex most exclusive and conclusive uh, proof. Again, we read this yesterday, but it's a good reminder. In Allah Ta'ala Yaqul al Abd, Yawm al Qiyamah, Allah will tell His servant on the Day of Judgment, Akunta Aliman, were you knowledgeable? Were you knowledgeable about the path that you have to take? Were you knowledgeable about how to worship me? Were you knowledgeable about the religion that you must have followed? Were you knowledgeable about your prayers, your personality, characteristics, demeanors, how to thank me? Everything. Were you knowledgeable? فَإِنْ قَالَ نَعَمْ قَالَ أَفَلَا عَمِلْتَ بِمَا عَلِمْتَ If you are knowledgeable, did you act upon the knowledge that you had? وَإِنْ قَالَ كُنْتُ جَاهِلًا And if he was ignorant, he said, no, God, I was ignorant. I didn't have the knowledge. قَالَ لَهُ أَفَلَا تَعَلَّمْتَ حَتَّى تَعْمَلْ Why didn't you go and learn? I have a youth session, alhamdulillah, I'm blessed to have a youth session early morning in the shrine of Abdullah al Hussein. Everywhere I go, I love the youth, so everywhere I go, alhamdulillah, I have a good amount of youth around me. We discuss in the shrine of Abdullah al-Hussein. MashaAllah, the best place. Alhamdulillah, I mean, it can't be better than that. Talking about the Fada'a al-Fahl al-Bayt salam and Qur'an, uh, inshaAllah, in heaven, we will talk with the youth about the Ahl al-Bayt alayhi wa salam. So I was telling them, I asked them, and I told them action plan will be from tomorrow, which was today, we had it yesterday, from today, you're going to bring me a series of lectures that you have saved on your laptop, on your computer, on your iPhone, on your iPad. Let me know a series of lectures that every day you're going to listen to one lecture. As soon as we say books, oh, Shaykhna, who has time to listen to books? We are very uh, attached to our devices. I said, okay, video, you want something to be visual, you want to say something? Alhamdulillah, we have good amount of lectures online available about different topics. Yeah. Uh, I told them every day, one lecture half an hour, one hour, this is it. But stay with it, as Imam Ali alayhi salam says, قَلِيلٌ مَدُومٌ عَلَيْهِ خَيْرٌ مِنْ كَثِيرٍ مَمْلُولٍ مِنْ If you do something, but you do it a little bit, but every day you continuously do it, like you continuously practice it and put it into action, it's better than doing one gigantic work and then you leave it. قَلِيلٌ مَدُومٌ عَلَيْهِ One lecture a day. Don't say from tomorrow I'm going to read this much, I'm going to listen to this much, I'm going to... No, no. One lecture a day. Afala ta'allamt. Allah will tell us. Afala ta'allamt. Why didn't you go and learn knowledge? Okay. So let us prepare ourselves one lecture a day. There are a series of lectures about Imam al-Mahdi, Allah Ta'ala, for Jushri. There are a series of lectures about Day of, day of Judgment. There are a series about Makaram al-Akhlaq. There are many, many series available online on YouTube which won't leave us any excuse. That will be one of the things Allah will say, well, it was not like back in the days you had to travel to get a book. You had it at the tip of your finger. Why didn't you learn? Why didn't you gain? Why didn't you listen to one lecture a day? So the person was, people will, might argue that we say Ahl Bayt alayhi are hujajullah ala Ahl dunya They're Allah's proof against the inhabitant of the world. We don't have Imam. Right now, our Imam, Imam Mahdi Ajallah Ta'ala Farju Sharif is in occultation. We don't have no way of communicating with him. This is a wrong phrase, wrong statement to him. No way to communicate with him, this is wrong. When Imam Sadaq alayhi salam, a person comes from, from far, far to him, he says, Imam, I cannot get to you. How? Imam says, just move your lips, say what you want, I hear it. Imam al-Mahdi Ajallah Ta'ala Faraju Sharif, there's a saying by Khaji Nasir al-Din Tusi, one of our great scholars, which he states, Wujuduhu lutfun, wa tasarrufuhu lutfun akhar, wa adamuhu minna. Meaning, 
his existence is grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And his behavior and conduct is another grace. And we are the reason for his occultation. If we want to, if we sincerely become of those pious which we talked about, Imam will reappear. Imam is there. We have numerous stories within, for example, Kitab Najm al Thaqib, Abqariya Hassan, where Imam met with people, people met with Imam. Ali ibn Mahziar, a famous story that he goes to Hajj 19 times to see the Imam. Not today with flights, you sit in an airplane, next couple of hours you are in Jeddah, which would take them month and month. And people would bet farewell to their families because we might go and not come back. Yeah, they're not sure of being there. Yeah, it was a dangerous route to Kaaba and to Mecca. He goes 19 times. The first one is Wajib. The rest, he goes to see Imam al-Mahdi. Because Imam Hajj, he goes to Hajj every year. So the 19th time, the 20th time, he received a message to come. You will see your Imam. I remember when I was almost 16, 15 years old, when I was in Washington, D.C., we acted. I acted Ali ibn Mahziar, so I know of this whole scenario. Great. It was a beautiful play we did. It's good for the communities to get together, inshallah, after the coronavirus. Make these stories alive, like bring it alive so people can see it. And play it is something that doesn't cost anything within your community centers, within Imam Barga, within Husseiniyah. He goes and he sees Imam Mahdi, Faraj al Sharif. As after a long story, Imam says, he said, Imam, I wanted to see you. Imam said, I was waiting for you. Allah. Meaning you hadn't reached, you didn't do what you had to do to get to the position that you would be honored to see me. I was waiting for you. What took you long? The one who's been to Hajj 19 times to see the Imam, Imam tells him what took you long. Even though Imam is more eager to see, see us, his followers because he is, than the followers. He is more merciful to us than our father. Definitely. Imam wants us to see, communicate, but it is us that we are not ready for him. So then when I, he, he spends a couple of days with the Imam, Imam tells him like, look at the status that, that Ali ibn Hazyar reached. Imam tells him, I wish you could spend more days with me, but you have to go. Look at the status of Ali ibn Mahziar. So, Imamuna, our Imam, we believe. Imamun Hayyun, Hadirun, Nadir. He is high, he is alive, compared to other beliefs from other sects of the religion of Islam that they think, they argue that he's not alive, he's not born yet, he will come, he will be born later. We believe he's high, he's already born. Hadir, he is present. He's not ghaib as of absent that his existence is not there. No, he exists. Every Thursday night, he visits the shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Because that's a mustahab act. And Imams of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, they do all the mustahabat. Every year he goes to Hajj. People see him in Hajj. So he's hadir. And he is nadir. He is supervising us. He is one of the shuhada that Allah has as a witness upon us. He sees our action. If we have these three words, as a reminder, let me put a sticky note on my laptop. Let me put some reminder on my phone as a screen. Imamuna, Imamun, Hayyun, Hadirun, Nadir. Alive, present, and he's witnessing me. That these three words, these three concepts will change my perspective toward the Imam of my time. Imam al Mahdi, Ajrullah Ta'ala, Faraj al Sharif. So for those people who say, we don't have our Imam with us, no, he is here, he is with us. Our affairs has been managed by him. He is the control room. His heart is the control room for the whole universe. The whole universe is operating based on the heart of Imam al-Mahdi Based on his leadership and Imam and guiding us, we are moving forward. If it wasn't because of him, as we mentioned, the whole earth would have vanished. This was what I wanted to conclude about. Against those people who say, well, Imam Mahdi is not there. No, he is there. He is high. Hadr and Nadr. We go to the next segment, next phrase of the of Ziyarah Jam al Kabira. Assalamu ala duaat ila Allah wal adilla ala mardat Allah. These two goes, they go hand in hand together. Peace be upon the callers to Allah. Assalamu ala dua, those who invite and call people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are the criterion to Allah's pleasure. We talk about it. Allah 
exist or not, yes, he exists. There are things that satisfies him and there are things that angers him. How can we know what satisfies him and what angers him? He must send someone to tell us, don't do this, angers me, do this, uh, satisfy me. satisfies me. And the anger and satisfaction of Allah is not that something happens to him. And it's not like what, uh, how we have of anger course, and satisfied. Of course, it won't affect him. Yeah, because Allah is not like there is nothing like Allah, of course, so he's of course. unique. But again, for, for you and I to understand as far as anger and satisfaction. So, as-salam to you upon the callers to Allah, upon the people who invite, and the criterion to know Allah's pleasure. Let us get to this. Da'i, the plural will be du'at. Yeah. The one who invites. So the one who invites should know the destination should know the path to the destination, sure. should know what satisfies the destination that we're trying to get to, and should know the obstacles that will be during the way. I was reading a quote by John C. Maxwell today. It's a beautiful quote. I'm going to read it. It says, A leader is one who knows the way, number one, goes the way, number two, and shows the way. Ahlul Bayt, wasalam, they know the way. وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَحْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا They will guide people by the, by the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he knows the way. He goes the way. One after one, Rasulullah, they will create. Before the way was created, Rasulullah, Ahl Bayt, they were created. They're not sitting aside and only telling people just this is the way you go no, no, by no. yourself. They're going the way. Each and every one of them. They are leading the way. They, they are led just, the way, yeah. definitely. By their sacrifice, by their generosity, by their forbearance, by their contribution, what they did for mankind. So they led the way. They go ahead, goes the way and shows the way. Mm -hmm. How he shows the way? With their teachings, with their ahadith, <laughs> with their stories. They, they didn't only give us a theory. Be like this. Be good. No, what is this good means? Good means follow, imitate Fatima al Zahra. لَوْ كَانَ الْحُسْنُ هَيْكَانَ لَكَانَتْ فَاطِمَ If husn and goodness what it was about to be embodied, mm -hmm. it would be Fatima to Zahra. All the good, all the thing that is good, it is Fatima to Zahra. So anybody who stands against Fatima to Zahra, shar, falsehood, evil, yeah. evil, because she's all the good. There is no good left for anybody else to be good. If you want to be good, you have to imitate Fatima to Zahra. You have to satisfy. That's why she becomes the criterion for Allah's satisfaction. رِضَى اللَّهِ رِضَى فَاطِمَةِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ يَرْضَى لِرِضَى فَاطِمَةِ وَيَغْضَبُ لِغَضَبِ فَاطِمَةِ So, two pillars needed to call and invite to Allah. We want to invite to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We call them. وَالْأَدِلَّاءِ الدعات إلى الله والأدلاء على مرضات الله. Those who want to invite to Allah سبحانه وتعالى they need these two basic pillars, basic ركن. We talked about أركان البلاد. These two pillars it must be there for anyone to invite to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Number one, it must be based on insight. It must it must be based on clarity. The path to Allah سبحانه وتعالى should not be blurry, should not be fuzzy, should not be doubts and shak in it. No, it should be clear path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where do we see it? Allah says, O Rasulullah, say chapter 12, verse 108. Qul, hadha sabidi ad'u ila Allah ala basiratin ana wa man ittaba'ani. Say, this is my way, this is my path. I summon, I invite to Allah with what? With insight. I and he who follows me. Rasulullah, the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are bringing for people, that this path, if you go through this path, it gets you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, say that this is my path and this is a clear path with insight. Ala basira. I don't keep it fuzzy and be it, um, I don't leave it ambiguous. No, I make it completely clear for you, this is what you need to do. Some of the parents, the way that they have their upbringing for the kids, they don't tell them, okay, where are we going? One of my relatives was telling me, when you leave the house, 
don't tell your kids where we're going. Tell them, change, we're leaving. Make it a surprise for them. I them because when I told them why, he said, because when you tell them why we need to go, why are we going now? They will ask millions of questions from the beginning until they get it. They, they will walk on your last nerve. Tell them we're going somewhere. Keep them in dark. When we get there, ta-da, we're here. That's it. You surprised them. I completely, I, I argued with, with, with them. Idea. I told them, no, before we go, I told them, okay, tomorrow is going to happen. Let them, so they become ask creative. Every ask every question. So we, when, we won't get, when we get there, you won't surprise me with some behavior that I didn't, I didn't want you to have that kind of behavior. Rasulullah didn't keep it. Qul, hadhi sabili. This is my path. Ad'u ila Allah. We call Ahl Bayt as salamu ala dua ila Allah. That's how it enlightens our heart and it flourishes our nafs. How the, the teachings of Ahl Bayt, salam, the ahadith of Ahl Bayt, it's compatible. The same wording with the teachings of Quran. As salam, Imam Al Hadi teaches us to say as salamu ala dua ila Allah. Salam upon them who call and invite to Allah. Rasulullah says, Hadahi, Hadahi Sabili, Ad'u, Dua, Ad'u, same root words. Il Allah, Ala Basiratin. So say, This is my path. There is no ambiguity, blurriness in it. Accor so, according to this narration, who is Ala Basiratin? Ana wa man tabani. Who is it that follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi? We see Tafsir al Burhan, volume 3. Page 214. And Abi Jafar, alayhi salam, fi ta'ala, qul hadhi sabili ad'u ila Allah, ala basiratin, They are the one who follows, follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Their path is clear. I bring an example. Imam Hussein alayhi salam, when he was about to leave Mecca, to come to Medina, from Medina, bid farewell to the grave of Rasulullah, to see what he sees next to the grave of Rasulullah, to come to Karbala. He says, we am leaving, and this journey, this path, end martyrdom, shahada. Man kana baadilan fina muhjatuhu. Anyone who wants to sacrifice muhja is the blood that comes out of the heart, is not the, the Blood, the blood that is, is a vein, yeah. Not the vein, no. The blood that comes out of the heart, that's Just called the muhjah. The heart, yeah. That heart, the heart and that blood. Oh, no. Anybody who wants to sacrifice this for us, فَرْيَرْحَ الْمَعْنَى Let him come with me. Don't come with me and say, Imam Hussein, well, we didn't know what's going to happen. It was not clear. We thought you are going to be triumph and you're going to take the government. We're going to have a position. No. This, Imam says, خُطَّ الْمَوْتِ Destination, death. Same way that a necklace uh, suits a neck of a lady, death is for us. And I'm making it clear. If you want, join me. Don't come with me thinking that I'm going to get something. See? Clarity. Yeah. Any war right now that you go, if we join an army, the general in the army, they always give motivational. Sure. We will win. This is it. We will go. We will this be triumphant. War. We are going to be. We will we be the one. We're, We're the doing powerful. this. So it motivates them. Yeah. Well, some will win. Some will lose. Imam knows that winning of this means martyrdom. Mm -hmm. You want to win this battle? Shahada. Get martyred, yeah. Shahada is the best thing that can happen to you in the whole universe. Where between the hand of Abu Abdullah Hussein Allah. defending him, any better place to be on that moment? Inshallah, all of our life will be sacrificed for the sake of Imam Al Mahdi Sharif in between his hand. So, and we have all of the path of Ahl Bayt. Rasulullah started this path. He laid down the path. I invite with insight. And they should know the destination in a way that how it can help us. Like if I want, if I want to climb a mountain, and I haven't climbed any mountain yet. I want to climb Mount Everest from the first time. Anybody who sees me and asks me, where are you going? I tell them, climbing my, uh, uh, Mount Everest. The first question will be, who are you going with? Do you have a guide? No, I'm going by myself. Hasbuna kitab Allah. I have the map. 
this is the way you go, you get to this peak, you go this way, you go, are you serious? You have the map, but you need a guide. You need to know how much oxygen you need. You need to know what you should take. No, I know I'm gonna take as much as belonging. No, you have to be light. At the same time, you have to think about the, the cold. You Let's have to think things, about yes. food, what kind of food you need, because the amount of food that you have to take, you have to be careful you need nutrition, this kind of oxygen. No, I don't need no oxygen. What do you mean oxygen? I'm gonna ox everything you can, you breathe the air. Habibi, they're up there, there is going to be, you need Black oxygen. Black oxygen, yeah, sure. You, all of this, no, I know the way. This is what exactly Umar al-Khattab said after Rasulullah's yeah. departure. Hasbuna kitab Allah. I can read the Quran and That's this will show me. Show me. Allah. Rasulullah says, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةِ I know it's insight. I know people won't be able to just take the map and read it. They need somebody to guide them. Sure. Take this much with you. T piety. Be careful, temptation. If two people of the opposite gender are together, the third one will be shaitan. Don't be in the closed room with the opposite gender. Be careful, don't follow the footsteps of shaitan. What is the footsteps of shaitan? This is it. Somebody has to teach us. So, and they should know the obstacles. When you go there, there's going to be this climbing this Mount Everest, there's going to be an obstacle. If this happened, you need to do this. If this happened, you need to do this. If you your body reacted this way, you need to take this kind of food. Somebody who already, again, we read the quote, somebody who, what did John C. Maxwell say? Who, the leader is the one who knows the way, basically, and goes the way, he's done it, and shows you the way. He knows this is it. He's been there, he came back. How many times have you been to Mount Everest? I've been there at least 15 times. Oh, you went there? Okay, you will be my guide. I want to go there. For example, I go there and just do Latam from Mount Hussein Ali Salam. Do Majlis Baba Abdullah Hussein on top of Mount Everest. Why not? So I need someone that can guide me climbing a mountain. But when it comes to and explain me the map, we're talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have our number one enemy, Shaytan, sitting on this path. That when I remove one obstacle, he places another obstacle. Is that that okay? There are five obstacles from here to cl climb Mount Everest, he tells you there are 10, 15 obstacles, add another 10, 15, 30, let's say 100 obstacles. For each obstacles, you need to do this. Okay, you know about it, you go, you won't be surprised because he planned and you gave your best option. <coughs> but shaitan, every day he becomes creative. One day this way, one day another way. For you, he comes differently. For sheikhs, he comes differently. For a woman, he comes differently. For a businessman, he comes differently. For a person in the position, he comes differently. The one who has wealth, he comes differently. Who doesn't have wealth. Ma climbing Mount Everest, 50 obstacles. Everybody is the same when they go. But with shaitan that he said, he said, if you remove this, I'll be again in front of you. You go, you cross one, I'm going to be there again. I will be there until your last breath and I keep bringing obstacles, obstacles, obstacles. Bring me a good story. Comes to my mind by Sheikh Murtadha Ansari, if I'm not mistaken. That a person came to him and told Sheikh Murtadha Ansari, I'm going to go, I believe, travel to visit one of the shrines of Ahl Bayt He comes to the Sheikh, Sheikh Murtadha Ansari, says his bed farewell and he wants to leave. And he leaves. After a day, he comes back. He's like, what happened? He said, I saw a dream that I want to tell you, Sheikh Murtadha Ansari. What is that dream? He said, in my dream, I saw shaitan. I saw next to him ropes, threads, strings, strings, chains, chains yeah. everything. Rope, very tiny, thin to the thick one. Chain, thin, chain, thick. I told him, what are these? He said, I put it around the neck of people, people's neck, and I grab it toward me. Here you go, that's an obstacle. Yeah. And I put, for everyone, based on their faith, based on their Iman, based on their status, based, based on their personality, based on their characteristics, because he goes in us the way our blood goes through our vein. Allah. That's the problem that we have. So we need somebody to tell us what is he trying to do, how he's deviating us. He should be a sign, people, this is shaitan. But they come and they remove this individual. They tell him, you said home, we know how to lead the way. They haven't gone through the way, they don't know the way, and they cannot show us the way. So, 
He says, I saw one of the, th the thickest, thickest chain has been cut three times. I told him, who's that chain belongs to? What happened with that chain? That the thickest chain. He said, last night I was trying to make Sheikh Murtada Ansari to do something three times. I tried, but he denied. I tried, he rejected me. I tried, he rejected me. That's why you see three cuts. So I was surprised. I told him, which one of these do you, you use for me? He said, for you, I don't spend any of these. I just told you to come, and you come. That's it. It comes, you come to me. That's how much your iman is low, that you just, shaitan tells you to come, you go. He said, I came and I told him, Sheikh, what did you do last night? He said, last night my wife was about to give birth, and I needed some money to go and bring a nurse or doctor to help her for a delivery. I didn't have money for my own, but I had the khums money and sadaqa money and zakat money next to me. These are our scholars that some people come and say, okay, our maraja, who say we have to follow maraja? These are our maraja that we have. And we have right now maraja who are pious of the pious of the pious amongst us. Alhamdulillah. May Allah prolong their lives. So I was about to go and borrow money, not to take money from the khums money that was, to just go borrow money. And tomorrow, I will talk with someone or so I will manage somehow to put it back. As soon as I was about to go, an idea came to my mind. If I borrow and I die, who's going to be able to pay back? I left it. Allah. My wife screaming, say, okay, help me. I couldn't control. I said, okay, I'll go again. How about this? I will write a paper, write for people that, okay, I took this much money. I borrowed from the Beitul Mal, Muslimin, treasure, Muslim treasure, and make sure, put it back that I thought maybe they will lose the paper. On the day of judgment, I will be accounted for this much money that I took. Third time, I said, I don't care. I'm not gonna go take the money. She will deliver the baby. He was borrowing, not taking. He said, this is what shaitan three times tried to convince this individual, Sheikh Murtad Ayatollah, Sheikh Murtad Ansari, but he rejected. So you and I, how many times shaitan will be there? He will be there again, as we have said it many times, until our, Last breath, he was be there. So we need someone. Shaitan deviated us to bring us back. So we tell about Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And if people have not been, the second is the ele second element. So the first element needs to be insight, yeah. clarity, no ambiguity, no fuzziness, no blurriness. Clarity. Second, it must be by the permission of Allah. Where do we get this? Chapter thirty-three, verse forty-six. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا يا أيها النبي إنا أرسل إنا أرسلناك شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا O Prophet indeed we have sent you as a witness number one as a bearer of good news number two as a warner number three and as a summoner as the one who invites As-salamu ala dua to Allah. Yeah, the same phrase. The same. same phrase in here. We wada'ayan ila Allah bi'ithni. By his permission and as a radiant lamp. Our Rasulullah needs to be given permission by Allah to invite people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without permission of Allah, Rasulullah won't be able to invite people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah hasn't given him permission. So I want to challenge anybody bring me a statement that allah gave permission to abu bakr umar uthman muawiyah yazid all bani marwan all bani abbas allah gave them permission to invite people to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring me bring me hadith bring me history bring me something that is evident allah for yazid after the he uh, martyred imam hussein alayhi salam in the land of Karbala, he just recites some uh, poetry, yes. poetry, and he says that all is lie, no yes. prophecy, no prophet, no religion. Yes. All of these are lie, and it's only for the kingdom, and it's only yes. for ruling people. So, and yes. right now, I'm the winner. They even didn't believe in Islam and in the Holy Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him. So, how can we suppose and imagine that Almighty has given them the right? He's the Khalifa to Allah. Uh, to be the Khalifa or to guide people. Some people say, "Well, that was Yazid." Well, who appoints Yazid? Muawiyah. Yeah. 
Who appoints Muawiyah? Umar. Umar. Who appoints Umar? Abu Bakr. Who appoints Abu Bakr? Umar. Allah. What is this? So, if it's not by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will be satanic. If it's not by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will be a satanic. They will invite to the willingly or unwillingly. Let's say they mis they mis they mistake. They didn't know. Yeah. Well, when you don't know, why didn't you give it to one who knew? We have more to discussion. We leave it for tomorrow night. Actually, thank you so much, Yagna. And this is the last sentence is really important. If you even if you say that I had no idea how to guide people, but okay, I'm right now your leader. Who told you to be the leader? If you don't know the path, and at the same time, the commander of faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, was there, and whenever you had a question, you also went to Imam Ali salam, and was asking him, as long as uh, Umar, several times, he said that Lawla Ali, lahalika Umar, if it wasn't for Ali, if, if Ali wasn't there, uh, I would have been died or vanished. Uh, or you know perished uh, so who told you to be a uh, caliph after the holy prophet muhammad peace and blessings be upon him and make all those wrong things throughout sure. the history yes. thank you so much Shaykhne. actually for this night the, the lecture actually every night it's great but this night alhamdulillah we uh, learned more about once again as long as Respect can I just give one reminder? Yeah, sure. If people can start, uh, the channel has WhatsApp number. Mm -hmm. Those who want to participate in this competition, yeah. tonight is the night of 25th, tomorrow is the night of 26th, day after tomorrow night, we will be sending the test. Those who want to participate in this competition, if they can WhatsApp uh, Imam Hussein TV3 WhatsApp number, writing their name, and that they are the country that they are sending from, they want to participate, and their age mm -hmm. if they can send us that uh, so i will receive it then i will personally whatsapp them and then they can reply by the 28th we have one day to reply right. and then by the night of eight inshallah we will announce the winner and inshallah they will have after the coronavirus is finished inshallah very soon inshallah. they will be getting their airfare paid to come and visit Abu Abdullah. That's inshallah. exactly what I wanted to say, but you said inshallah. it, and I'm so thankful to you. Thank you, thank thank you, you so much, Ahmed. Thank you, respected brothers and sisters, respected viewers for tuning and inshallah, you all be in a great condition, and don't forget to pray for us when you are fasting. Thank you so much. Have a great time, and Ya Hussein. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. Mm-hmm.